Hello and uh, welcome back. Today I have something very nice. If you are into vintage equipment or in HP equipment, I have got here an HP frequency counter with Nixies. If you are a viewer from the start, I have done when I started the channel a lot of uh, restorations of old frequency counters or at least I clean a lot and usually that was it and we have a look in the inside. But nowadays I also put a little bit of ham videos and uh, some new Chinese equipment that I uh, receive. And so, but I did not forget my old uh, vintage viewers. So, what is it? It is an HP 3734A. And when I saw it, I was a little bit confused because I thought, how is this possible? I have seen a few HP counters and usually the serial number starts with, or the type number starts with a 52 or a 53. So if I look at some of them that I uh, had, that was a 5315B, I think. And there is a 5334, also B version. 5326, 5326B, and the other one that looks really cool. I saw this also in the signal path, and I needed to have one. That is the 5245, the M version. So you see, it's always been 52 or 53. Here we have a look at the front. It really says 3734A, electronic counter. It is from HP. Well, we can see it is old. I think it is 60 something. And uh, why well, it's a little bit dusty, but in the end it, it doesn't look that bad. I'm not sure if this is a scratch or it's that's dirt, but we can try to, to polish that out. It still has his feet. Look at this. And of course it's a little bit sticky because that is what the final does at some point. And uh, yeah doesn't look that bad. The back also, yeah, only this, uh, I think it's a PH163, very hard to get. You probably pay around 30 just to have this, uh, this cable. But uh, I have one and I'm just changing it uh, throughout my old equipment. So then I thought, okay, what is the deal with this 3.7 number if it's usually 52 or 53? So I post a message on the EEV blog in the test equipment addicts. And uh, well, a guy who knows a lot about uh, HP, David, he uh, commented and he said, well, the 73 was actually a number that is reserved for uh, if it's made in, uh, in the UK. So we should see markings probably that it, this one is not from the US, but from the UK. And uh, this model seems to be a 5534 that is uh, only then upgraded maybe to five megahertz because there is a, a two and a half uh, version that was later with newer serial numbers was downgraded to two megahertz. But there are some models that are five megahertz. And um, I got a little list with serial numbers, but uh, I, I, I didn't see where my serial number fits in there. So for me, it's a surprise if it's two, two and a half or five megahertz. Well, we already had a brief look, but I like to zoom in a little bit more. We can see it is a five digit Nixie. Let me clean because I think, and this is my first meter that has this, we are looking at the top of the Nixie instead of to the side. So, yeah, it is a scratch, but I tried to polish that out later. So, when we look closer, and I think we can see the Nixies are now pointing. So, we are looking at the top of them. And usually, all the meters I've had before. I was looking at the side. So what I mean is, is here, if we look at these, maybe if I add some light, yeah. You can see the Nixies are standing up and we are looking at the side to see the numbers. But the other Nixies are actually on the top. So thank you, David, for that extra information on the, that it is probably made in the UK. Let's have a look at the label. 
Okay, well, let's have a look then. Let me zoom in a bit. What does it say? <laughs> Indeed, made in Great Britain. Pretty cool. And it also seems that we can see what options are here. Option 1 and option 3, if I read that correct. Oh, we see some more connections. The digital recorder output, a start and a stop trigger. We can use internal reference or external. Uh, I think this reference is very low. It's like 100k, so it's not like 1 megahertz or 5 megahertz. So I think we need to put something in there like between 100 and 300k, I think. Uh, you have the automatic reset or the automatic reset disable. And then you just manual need to push it every time, I think. And it is already set to 230, which is good. Well, I made a picture of the label of my uh, 5245M counter, and there it absolutely shows it's made in the US. And I'm lucky to have this cable, and I think it came in this signal generator, I think 1.2 to, uh, to 4 gigahertz, I forgot the type number, also from HP, it was with the Clistron generator. Uh, interesting. So, but I have this cable, and well, I haven't tried it, I'm not sure what's going to happen if I plug it in. So maybe I just do with my AC source and I slowly get the voltage up. Well, I have it there. I put my 110 volt. I don't see any scary thing, so let me try to switch it on. I do see a light, and it takes 90 milliamps, so I think that will be okay. I can put it on a higher voltage. Okay, I put it to 220. Yes, it does boot. Wow, the lights are so bright. Wow, look at this. And I haven't started cleaning it yet. Look at that. The digits are so big and so bright. Yeah, it's counting. Look at this. It's even counting. It took a while to, uh, to start. I think that's the oscillator that slowly starts. This is pretty cool. And it is in uh, check mode. And it is... That means it's 10k, I think. Yeah, it's still trying to stabilize, I think. I put it back in test mode and even the test mode is not agreeing with himself, which is kind of funny. But it also means that the oscillator is probably still trying to get to his uh, frequency. Okay, well, it suddenly stopped counting automatically. I'm not sure what happened. I can do manual. But the automatic that we saw in the beginning, that doesn't work anymore. And it always has this value. So that was actually amazing. First time we powered it all, it actually did something. It needed to heat up a little bit and then it started running. You could see the K time going, but uh, after a while it also stopped again. So, uh, what's the status inside? So, let's see. I see two screws in the top. Probably two more here, yes. And then we can slide it out, I think. Or how does it, oh, we take it out like this. Look at that. So, here we have it. All the Nixies. They all look to have the same number. Sometimes there is one that is different. Oh yeah, it is. 504, 504, 415, 415, 415. And that could be sometimes because there is a dot added and, and some of the boards don't have that extra dot. And uh, yeah, 
everything seems to be populated. This port is in, this port is in. Here we have the oscillator. It's indeed 100k. And it says display. This one says gate. Well, the, all the digits. Maybe here it can be something. It says port extender, but I don't see any space and I don't see a connector. Well, let's have a look at the bottom then. Not sure if we need to remove a lot more because of the feet that are here. Okay. No, here we go. Why even from the bottom it looks like that all the boards are populated. Here we have a bunch of PCBs also. But uh, one, two, three, one, two, three. All seems to be there. So Seems to be almost full option then. It's almost museum quality. Not too much dust. I don't see any marks of moisture. It all just looks new. Okay, here we have all the Nixie units. Um, well, here you can see pretty good that we are looking on the top of the Nixie instead of at the side. And well, it's probably some resistor network. We can open that also to have a little peek. Yes, it looks like some resistor network thingy. Okay, let's try to switch it on, I'll zoom in a bit, and here we go. Wow, look at how bright the Nixies are. The cleaning job is perfect, I think. The only thing is the internal oscillator doesn't run anymore. And I also tried now uh, external reference. Uh, you need to have then a 100k. Uh, but that is now also not working, so I think probably all the caps are now broken. 
Wow, super nice. I really like the result. I need to investigate a little bit more because first I was running on the internal oscillator and you saw the gate time uh, blinking in the bottom, just like you see when you press the reset. You see the little light here that is on. And uh, and after a while that, that stopped working. So then I tried to put external reference. That did work for a while. You need to put 100K, I put one or two volts, not too much. And then I saw nicely the light blinking. It still didn't count where it should count, but it was blinking uh, friendly. And uh, after five minutes that also stopped. So, uh, well, the obvious things, probably a few of the caps that need to be replaced. Uh, power supply seemed good. Uh, we see that the Nixies are super, super bright. They still have a lot of hours left because they are super bright. So that is for another time. Thank you for watching and I uh, hope to see you next time.